Hi guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Today I have Rianka with me of Your Greatest Contribution. Hi Rianka. Hi. How are you? Doing fantastic. Great, great. So today we're <laughs> going to talk about the financial transition into entrepreneurship yes. and really just giving people a guide on how to do that jump, um, but do it smartly so that right. you're not having to go back into the workforce. Right. without that desire because right. um, I know there are a lot of people who want to go into entrepreneurship but doing it full-time is really scary yes um, and I know you just recently celebrated your two-year anniversary so two congrats years. that's Thank so you. exciting <laughs> um, so really just imparting some of that wisdom on um, some of us who just are looking to make that transition a little bit smoother yeah uh -huh. so I would say it's um, you know when we transition into entrepreneurship or just being a business owner, mm -hmm. a lot of the times we only think about the financial component mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Um, and when I talk to uh, future entrepreneurs or future business owners or mm -hmm. those who are looking to transition, I share with them there are two, two avenues, two mm -hmm. things that you need to think about. One is definitely the financial component. Correct. And then the other is the mental. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to do a second one on that because right. that's definitely important. Just getting mentally prepared for that jump as well. Right. Well, and 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 the mental part of it also kind of aligns with the financial. So maybe mm -hmm. you know today we can get kind into of, some of that. A little the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> a little bit. A little the bit. Tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So yeah. what would you say is the biggest mistake some make when they're making that transition? Uh, I would say probably truly not being financially prepared okay. and and what I mean by that is one day we wake up and it, we're just like I have this great idea mm -hmm. I want to make sure you know I, I, I want to make this happen and you know you definitely can make it happen right. if there's a will there's definitely a way right. like I'm a big proponent of that uh, but you have to be financially prepared as well. Yeah. Like, don't just wake up one day and just like, you know, I've had it with my I boss. I can't take it anymore. Throwing up the paper <laughs> saying, peace out. Like, exactly. What does your bank account look like? You know? <laughs> That's real. That's like, real. Can you actually afford to leave to this full time stuff. job? So, what I share with people is to transition um, slowly into mm -hmm. entrepreneurship one is definitely take stock of your finances today okay so how much money do i have mm -hmm. from a liquid perspective meaning cash what's in my checking what's, what's in my savings account mm -hmm. how much do i have in my retirement account um that's important and, and then creating a budget okay and what i like to say is i don't care if you're a thousandaire or a millionaire mm -hmm. everyone needs a budget yeah um and so especially when you want to transition to an entrepreneur right. because it you're the alpha and the omega as far as like when it comes to your finances mm -hmm. and all of that. So take stock of where you are, create a budget, mm -hmm. figure out what are your fixed living expenses. Okay. What are you going to have to continue to pay for um, whether you have a job or not? Yeah. So right. rent, yeah. car note, maybe, yeah. maybe not. If you're a millennial, you probably still have some student loan debt, yeah. right? <laughs> and that comes, we have to pay Sally Mae back, yeah. you know? <laughs> Unfortunately. And, and think of, you know, specifically what, um, you know, bills that you have on a monthly basis that are specific to you. Right. And then start to think, what can I pull back from? Okay. Um, one of the things that is very easy is the Saturday brunches that we go on. Yeah. We love to socialize over food. I love food. I mean, I, <laughs> love it. <laughs> but it's an expensive habit. It's a very expensive habit. Yeah. And I think, and I'm not saying don't will reward yourself, but, but cut back some and learn to put a, a, a budget on your fun money as well. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. On a very financial planet here. <laughs> Listen, I'm just trying to get my life right. right. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out life at this point. Yeah. yeah. So take stock of where you are today. Create your budget. Figure out, all right, I need to earn at least fifteen, two thousand dollars $2,000, mm -hmm. $1,500, $2,000 on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. um, and have at least three to six months of that money Whatever set aside. Whatever your Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because another thing is... You don't want to assume as soon as you start your business. It's going to be financially productive, basically. Right, right. You don't want to assume that the first week or the first month that you are 
you know, on your own that you're going to have your first client. Mm -hmm. If you are in the service oriented business or if you're in the products world, you don't want to assume that you're going to sell your first widget Mm -hmm. or whatever it is that, you know, that product is that you're making. And so you just want to be financially prepared to say, all right, what if I don't have any clients? For the next three months. How long can months. I last? How long can I last? Right. And don't burn any bridges because you may have to tiptoe back. Back in. into it. Yeah, absolutely. Back into the workforce. So, yeah. So how do you know when it is the right time? Is it solely having that three to six months built up or is there something else you should be looking for? One, being financially prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, two, you have a business plan. Mm-hmm. You have a plan of action. Um, and then you have to be self-aware of yourself. Right. Uh, being a entrepreneur, being a business owner, you have to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple of validations that are not going to happen anymore for you. Um, one is a paycheck mm-hmm. uh, every every Two other weeks, week. Every other week, yeah. The first and the fifteenth. Yeah. There's not going to be this ching mm-hmm. that enters into your bank account, right. validating that you actually work. Yeah. Okay. So you can work. 40, 50 hours a week totally And it up counts for nothing. To about 100 hours. Yeah. And you're used to getting a paycheck. Mm-hmm. And you may or may not get one. Like, how does that make you feel? Like, you right. have to really sit with yourself and say, am I okay with putting in the hours and not getting paid for my time? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Not getting immediately paid for your time. Right, right. That instant gratification. So that's one thing. That's one validation that I had to self-check myself mm-hmm. with. Um, and then the, also the other validation is uh, sometimes like that pat on the back or just mm-hmm. like, hey, you're doing a great job. Um, again, you're the alpha, you're the omega in a sense of you are going to have to self-check yourself. Yeah. And self, like you said, validate yourself and just being able to say, hey, I did do a good job today. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, I didn't. Right. You know, having both of those conversations with yourself. Right. Because you're the employer. Exactly. As well. And so um, setting up goals for yourself okay. and benchmarks of mm-hmm. am I doing okay? Because you can no longer benchmark money. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Maybe down the line, you can start ben- benchmarking like percentages and revenue and how right. much you're bringing in. But in the beginning, that's not going to be the case. So right. how do you define success? Mm-hmm. And so that's a huge Having part. Having those goals in place and being able to check them off your list and say, hey, I accomplished this, I accomplished that. Right, right. And sometimes it's, it's, it's just those to-do lists. Yeah. That you'll feel never accomplished. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's <laughs> FYI. It never ends. They do not end. <laughs> uh, however, you know, just being able to just feel accomplished and say, you know, mm-hmm. I had six things on my list today. I accomplished all six Mm -hmm. it makes you feel good absolutely um so how do you know you're ready to take the leap one you are financially prepared Mm -hmm. um you have some money set aside for just in case you don't get a client also is that mental component of Mm -hmm. you know i'm not going to have a couple of validations and how do i feel about are you okay with it right truly okay right so what can you do if you feel you're ready before your money is ready um create the side hustle. No one is telling you you can't do it on the side. If anything, start doing it on the side. Mm -hmm. Another validation or just kind of like testing the market is what you're selling, do people want to buy it? That's true. Yeah. Because everything, every idea is not a good idea. Right. And every product, not everyone wants to buy, Mm -hmm. you know? So um, I I think it's very smart to start doing the side hustle and continue to work your full time. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Continue to work and, you know, do your side hustle. I mean, that's, I mean, I didn't do that for my job. Um, However, I created the business on the side. Mm -hmm. So when I finally said goodbye to my firm, I was ready. Like I could literally open the virtual doors. Mm -hmm. That was your greatest contribution. Awesome. (laughs) So my, my last official question is if I've made that jump too soon, what next? Like, I took the leap of faith, and I said, you know, I'm going to go for it. But I'm starting to feel like, okay, maybe I wasn't ready. Okay. I mean, that's a good question, because um, sometimes you just have to kind of have that conversation with yourself. And the one thing I don't want you or anyone else who are who's feeling that way is to think you're a failure. Mm-hmm. Like, the only... The only time you are a failure is if you stop trying. That's true. Like, if you just give it up. And if anything, it kind of takes a little bit more 
of a person to actually say, you know what? I think I jumped too soon. Let me go back. Yeah. That takes humility to say the least. Yeah. It takes a lot of humility and, and humbling yourself yeah. of saying, you know, what? There, there's still some, some ducks I need to get in a row mm-hmm. in order. Because honestly, at the end of the day, um, it's, it's the end consumer that you should be concerned mm-hmm. about and right, in right. the forefront of your mind. For me, it's my clients. Mm-hmm. And so if I jumped too soon or if I wasn't ready or if I didn't have all the dots, you know, dotted, uh, the I's dotted, the T's crossed, right. at the end, who suffers is my client. Right. So are you truly ready for your clientele? Right. Yeah. Right. And so if you're selling this widget, like if you don't have – the proper resources to keep up with the demand or to the quality check. Are you really ready to, to be putting your product out there? Because it's your product, it's your brand, it's your name. Exactly. exactly. So. so making sure that we're just being more in tune and realistic and honest with ourselves. So that do you have any final thoughts for us that you can share with us? Sure. Um, you know, entrepreneurship, it's great. It's, uh, it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. It's not easy whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you think this is something where it's a get rich quick type of thing, or, um, you know, you know, seeing your name everywhere or your brand everywhere, it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we see a lot of that on social media. We see a lot of people and just like, wow, like they're doing so great. Yeah. And they're come up with so quick, but you really don't know it was a 10 year grind. Yeah. It takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Yes. It takes 10 years. Yeah. Um, and I've been, I would say in the profession for almost 10 years. So, Mm -hmm. You know, and how am I measuring success? I I don't know. Exactly. (laughs) I would say you're being successful. I would say. um, Even just taking that leap to being a full-time entrepreneur and to be able to sustain that for two years, that in and of itself is worth celebrating. Yes. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you are okay with it, I would love for them to be able to maybe comment a few basic questions. Mm -hmm. Um, And then both of our contact information will be on the post. Um, If you have any financial questions... This is our expert, um, so definitely um, send her an email, and you have consultations on the website, right, yes. where they can schedule that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I've learned a lot. I hope you have. All right, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much.